Hey, Math 43, we're going to finish up those initial problems, 49 through 61, um, coming out of Chapter 8. So we did 49 through 59. We just finished making our 97% confidence interval. Uh, oh, just excuse me, our 95% confidence interval. And we want to go ahead, and in 60 and 61, they're going to change a few things. So in 60, we're going to keep the mean the same the standard deviation the same, the confidence level the same, but we're gonna change the sample size. We're gonna increase our sample size. And we talked about in chapter seven, when you increase sample size, you decrease variability. Or another way of saying that is our margin of error is gonna get smaller. So anytime you increase sample size, your margin of error gets smaller. And in the, the question we're being asked, it says, would the error bound become larger or smaller? Well, it's smaller, and how do I know? Well, I know because you increase sample size. But let's take a more numerical approach to this and reconstruct our confidence interval using the fact that our sample size is now 69. And keep in mind, back when we were doing 49 through 59, our sample size was 39. I know there's a lot of nines being... Um, said out loud. So anyways, our degrees of freedom here are 68. So there's my confidence interval formula. So the mean's going to stay the same. The standard deviation is going to um, stay the same. Our T will change. Even though we're going to keep 95%, it'll be adjusted because our degrees of freedom and our sample size has changed. So I keep the mean the same. I keep the standard deviation the same, but now let's talk about, hey, what does our N, excuse me, what does our T star, oh, I did the same color on accident. <laughs> what does our T star value look like now? And we know again, like I said, N has changed because N is now 69. Okay, so we've got our degrees of freedom being 68. And if I look at this column here, I don't have a, a row for 68. I'm, I'm trapped in between 60 and 80. But I, I don't have a row, like I said, for 68. And that's fine. What that means is we're going to play it safe. I've achieved 68 degrees, excuse me, 60 degrees of freedom. I've passed that threshold. But I have not passed the threshold for 80. So I, I can't go to that row. So I'm going to stay with my 95% column. But I'm going to go here to 60 degrees of freedom. And I'm going to get that that critical value is 2. And let me just scroll back and show you what we were looking at before. I got to scroll way back. We stayed at 95% confidence. There we had 38 degrees of freedom. So we had to play it safe and go with 2.042, right? We had to go on that row of 30 and we had 2.042. So I'm going to scroll back again. And you can see me taking note here that our, our critical value shrunk from 2.042 to 2.000. And, and that's also, you can start to see if you go down any column here, you can see that these numbers are getting smaller. They're getting closer and closer to the standard or to the z-score because as sample size increases, right, it, it, we start to really not be able to discern much of a difference between the z-distribution and the t-distribution. Okay, so I can go through and I can put all of this into my calculator if I want, and I find out that my confidence interval is from 3.011 to 3.501. Now, there's a couple of ways to actually find the error bound. I could just crunch this number here on my calculator, and that's what you see me doing here. So my margin of error for this problem, my, I'll put my MOE was point, looks like 245, and the units on this are colors on a flag. All right, now let's compare that to what we had before. If we remember from back up here, my margin of error was about 0 0.330, right? There was my error bound. So as sample size increased, my error bound decreased from 0 0.330 to 0 0.245. All right, so there, my, my error bound decreased. I, I answered that one. Now 61 says, keep the mean standard deviation and sample size the same, but now let's reduce the confidence level. So here, we're gonna, make our confidence level go down. And when your confidence level goes down, how is that gonna affect your margin of error? Well, if you're less confident, it means you're, you're not worried about making an error so much. So actually, you're gonna have a smaller margin of error. All right, we're not worried about it. Our confidence level is going down. So let's go through the mechanics of this and talk about how that plays out numerically. So again, here is my formula. We have the same X bar that we did before, same S and same N this time, right? So those three numbers are the exact same that you saw in numbers 49 through 59. But let's talk about how we get our confident or our T star value if we are 90% confident. So if we are 90% confident, and keep in mind my degrees of freedom was 38, 
all right, so I'm gonna be on this row because I've achieved 30 degrees of freedom, but I have not achieved 40 degrees of freedom, but this time I'm on 90%. So you can see that this number is 1.697. And keep in mind, back in 49 through 59, we were at 2.042. So you see, I went this way, my number got smaller. And when that number gets smaller, that means quite literally this expression, this margin of error is going to be smaller. So I crunched my confidence interval and I got 2.981 to 3.531. Now, if I want to find my actual margin of error, what I can do is I can take 3.531. Actually, let me do this graphically just so you can see it. If you think about where we are on the X bar axis, let me write one. Okay. I have, I've got a lower bound of 2.981. I've got an upper bound of 3.531. And the number that's always in the middle is your statistic. So this is 3.256. So this distance is a margin of error. And then this distance is also a margin of error because that's how we get um, our confidence interval. We add a margin of error to get to our upper bound and we subtract a margin of error to get to our lower bound. And as I'm looking at this, I don't think I actually calculated the margin of error. So let me just go to my calculator for a moment and do 3.531, I'm gonna subtract 3.256 and I'm gonna get that my margin of error this time out was 0.275. And again, this is 0.275 colors. So now let's go compare this, right? Because I said, hey, the margin of error got smaller. Let's go back to my original problem. Let me go back to 49 through 59, all right? And what was my margin of error there? My margin of error there was 0 0.330. And now we look and my margin of error shrunk to, wait for it, oops, <laughs> passed it too much. My margin of error shrunk to 0.275. So sure enough, my margin of error value did head down. All right, so that's it. Rounding out the first set of the problems, numbers 49 through 61. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.